You have just dialed in live to the center of the grilling universe. That's right, guys. It's red hot and ready time again, and we're off to Morocco. That's right, land of the movie stars, all-night dinner theaters, casinos, and Princess Grace's tomb. John, yeah. it's Morocco, not Monaco. Okay, we're off to Morocco, land of camel traders, you know, camel dung, uh, hash, and opium guys, and... And I'm going time traveling, showing you all those slamming barbecue tips that you need to know. So while we're at it, how much for the women? To the grill. <laughs> we are back. Nice to see you. Come on over here. This lamb, this is lamb, was caught stealing. <sighs> what? That was his left leg? He's Passive a sick, fist and arm sick man. I'm going to use a little bit of this nice lamb leg meat. We're going to make up a traditional, well, maybe not so traditional, and this is the traditional Egyptian. OK. They do this in Egypt sometimes, but mostly in Morocco. This is just the uh, above the fore shank of the lamb that was caught stealing earlier. So no guilt. Guilt-free lamb, guys. I've tried that. It doesn't work. We're also going to be doing a number of other dishes today. We got. We got shalalab and shalahachan, which is actually a, uh, it's an orange and walnut salad. It's very nice. We also have hachpun, <laughs> which would be uh, actually perhaps described as more of a um, release of phlegm. It's not a dish, I know there's something in there. And we're also going to be doing up a little bit of fish. We got some white fish, okay, of an undisclosed variety, although I'm told that it actually came from the waters just off of Morocco. Okay, you just got to check this out. Hey, Cracker, come here. Take a whiff of this, huh? Wow. Oh. Nice, huh? No. How does a lamb get into a cathedral? Oh. It's not a joke, man. It's a question. Cracker? There you go. Why don't you take that and make some soup? Nice. And more guilty meat. Meat. Meat, 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 meat. Right Carnivores. OK. Chop this up. One inch dice. This stuff is slippery. That's what we got in the cathedral. This is one slippery lamb. OK, what we're going to do now is we're going to make the spice mixture, ras al hanu, right? OK? The reason we're going to toast these things off in this pan is because it's going to release all that fantastic flavor that we're looking for, okay? We got about a tablespoon of allspice berries. Got about a tablespoon of black peppercorns. And this, my friend, is cardamom. This is something that they also throw into the tea and coffee over there, that sort of thing. Very, very pungent spice. Very aromatic, resiny kind of thing. Okay, we got some chili flakes. That's about a tablespoon. Pardon me, a teaspoon of chili flakes. Got some fresh nutmeg, okay? This is the nut that comes from the meg tree. I'm just going to grate that in there. Don't want to use too much of this. Very strong flavor. No. There we are. We got some cloves. You can see the smoke is starting to come off this. This is just what we want. That was about a teaspoon of cloves. We got some turmeric, which is a ground root that looks very much like ginger, except obviously a different color. And this is the ginger. That's about two tablespoons of that. Some coriander seed. The coriander seed is the seed of the coriander plant, which produces the cilantro leaf. And this is mace, which is actually the covering of that nutmeg nut that I just showed you a second ago. That nutmeg nut, huh? Never know what he's going to do next. OK, let's take it off and let it cool just for a second. Move it around the pan so it doesn't burn. Time traveling. OK, I think that's fine. The reason we're not putting this in when it's too hot is that all the oils are still going to be kind of damp a little bit. It's going to clog the motor of this up. And also, if it's too hot, it's also going to create steam, and this thing's going to pop open and burn somebody, right? 
carefully, push this into the grinder. This is just your basic kind of coffee grinder, right? You know, you know, 20, 30 bucks, really valuable tool. And it does this other crazy thing too, it actually they used to grind coffee. But you let that go for 20 seconds or so. Okay, that should be just about right. Oh man, that smell, super sweet, right? This is so traditional Moroccan. We're gonna add this to our fish dish. It's gonna go into our couscous that we're making a little bit later on. So come on back, we're doing all things Moroccan, right? And I mean everything. Here on Red Hot and Ready, we've done a lot of shows. And on each and every one of them, John has had something brilliant to say. So because he's spread so much wisdom over such a long period of time, we're giving you a refresher course. A kind of John Pritchard condensed. So stick around because we're giving you a retrospective of the many words of John, our resident griller. From Hamburg to Yorburg, it's all about the meat here on Red Hot and Ready. Okay guys, we're back. We got our camel meat. Uh, we have our lamb meat here. And we're gonna marinate this up, okay? We want this to sit like this for about a couple of hours, you know, to absorb all the flavors properly, okay? Got ourselves a little bit of cinnamon here. Very Moroccan sort of flavor. Got some black peppercorns. That's about two teaspoons. We got some more of those crazy uh, coriander seeds. Yeah, that's what they are. Going straight in. We got some cumin. Another very, very popular spice over in that part of the world. Got ourselves a little bit of lemon. This is as easy as this is. And the flavor is going to sink right into the meat for you. It's one whole lemon. Got that. A little bit of extra virgin olive oil. That's straight in there. That's about half a cup, right? I'm going to stir this up. Let that sit, as I said, for an hour, two hours. You know, if you got two hours, let it be two hours. If you got 15 minutes, it's better than not doing it at all. Okay, let's move on to a side dish here. This is a crazy dish called Ashal Simtim. If there's any Moroccans watching this, perhaps you can call in right now. The phone lines are open. You can let me know about my incorrect or correct pronunciation. I have a funny feeling I'm right, but you know, I've been wrong before. Lay down a few romaine lettuce leaves or a boss and bib or whatever kind of greens you want to put down there. Basic lettuce, that's cool. Okay, we got our walnuts here, okay? We're gonna toast these off in the pan the same way we did with the spices, right? And for the same reasons, right? It's gonna get all that crazy nut flavor right out of those things. I agree. We got a couple of oranges. These have been segmented. And that's a very simple process. No. What we got is we got the zest of two oranges, right? That's just the grated skin, right? Don't go as far down as the white pithy bits because that's where it gets bitter. So that's the two oranges. We got juice, about a quarter cup of lemon juice. Got ourselves a little bit of sugar just to sweeten this stuff up. That's just a couple teaspoons. And we got about a teaspoon and a half of salt. And I'm beginning to smell these nuts now. They're looking good. He's a dirty one. You can tell when they're ready, okay? When you're roasting nuts, put your hand there. If you can't hold it for more than a second or so, that's as far as they need to go. Okay, I'm gonna toss this right in here. Mmm, listen to that sizzle, huh? Give it a stir around. And straight on here. This tastes fantastic. And that's the true essence, you know, of, of, of fine cooking, you know? You don't need to tart it up with a whole lot of other stuff. If you've got three things that taste really good together, and you can find the right three things, that's cooking, man. That's great. Let me just try a bit of this. Mmm. Oh, it's really orangey. Tell you, I forgot one little thing here. I'm gonna add to this now. Looks like water. It's sort of water, but it's not. It's orange flower water. Okay, so with, with that orange flower water, it's an extract of orange blossoms, right? And simple as that. We're gonna do some fish here. Okay, we got this really nice firm white fish here. It's kind of hard to find. Something called coelacanth. Just ask, ask your fishmonger about it. He should be able to hook you up with some of that. And if he can't, well, he ain't any kind of fishmonger, is he? Look, we got some onions here, chopped onions, straight on there. Quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, getting it in. Teaspoon of the coriander seeds again. We got whole cumin seeds, okay? We had the ground stuff before. This stuff is all musty and fragrant. It's great. I'm only about half of that because uh, it is quite strong. Okay, so that would have been about two 
two and a half teaspoons. We've got a couple tablespoons of cilantro. And we're just going to douse this with a little bit of olive oil. We're not going to we're not going to salt this right away because what that would do is that would just draw too much moisture out of the meat, right? Okay, that's looking good. Let's make ourselves a little bit of a foil pouch here. This is a very Moroccan thing because uh, it's a little known fact that Moroccans invented metal. What? There's mountains of tin foil in Morocco. If you don't believe me, just fly over there yourself. It's mostly found in the coastal regions where the deserts meet the, uh, the Sierra. And uh, it's very interesting the way they mine this. And huge spools, you know, they have a lot of slave labor, you know, mostly young blonde women from other countries that were hitchhiking there in their teens. <sighs> so they got these women, these hitchhikers, white slaves, if you will. They strap it over their backs and they make them tug it off these huge rolls embedded into the side of the Sierras. And so they walk along, they're going, Very much like that, although something may be lost in the translation because I'm not wearing full regalia. I got it, I got it. I'm putting our fish into a neat little cooking package here, right? I'm going to make an insert piece to put on top of this in order to seal in all those great flavors when it starts steaming, okay? So like this, I probably use a little too much tin foil, but don't worry about it, there's plenty of it. Okay? Fold it up, over, pinch the edges. And there we have it, guys. We got our white slavery, white fish, coelacanth, Moroccan style fish filet for you for two on the barbecue. Okay, so come on back. If we're doing it up Moroccan style, I'm I'm gonna show you a little dance that I learned when I was living with a bunch of men on a farm. Okay? Okay guys, we're back with more Best of Breast. It's time to get right into it now. If you like a small tit, you want a big tit. I like big tits. We're making some breast implants, okay? I gotta get my hands on some of those. Whoa. Got some fresh nutmeg. One kind of crazy thing about this is that if you eat, well, you know, probably two or three of these things, grate them up, throw them in a capsule, down them, you can get high, right? I don't recommend it though because the dosage in order to get high is just around the same dosage to end up in a coma, so hey, you be the judge. A little bit of salt. This is sea salt we're using because it's much finer flavor than iodized salt. Stay away from that. You don't need any more iodine in diet, do you? Tune back in next week where we'll teach you to hunt a cow live. All you need is a ball peen hammer and a good pair of shoes. This is that primordial thing that man does. You got a crazy look in your eye. <laughs> oh, I frightened oh her. <laughs> you know, oh he scared me. Yeah, that's beautiful. Turn it 90 degrees. Is that a sword under your cape or are you just happy to see me? You ever seen a hot seat? Oh, yeah. Bet you that hurt. Hey, what does that look like? <laughs> you are so, so, so dirty. You know how you tell medium rare? Grab your thumb like this, put your thumb together, and leave it half loose. The feel right in there, that's what medium rare is. That looks nice, doesn't it? Bottoms up. It's all about finding your inner caveman here on Red Hot and Ready. It's all about finding your inner caveman here on Red Hot and Ready. Okay, baby. Let's ream this out. You getting this? Oh, yeah. That just finishes the cut. 
Nice, huh? Hey, what are you looking at? If we're blowing up ducks. Bad taste never tasted so good. Voila. John's fishy panties, huh? Dirty, dirty boys. To the grill. Hey, you kids are staying on my driveway. Okay, look, we're back at the grill. We got our fish happening, we got our lamb happening. We're gonna make a little couscous. This is such a cool dish, you're not gonna believe it, okay? First off, let's check out our grill. We got sort of medium heat happening on the left-hand side. Our fish in that beautiful marinade we made is going straight on there, okay? Whoops, here it goes. Goodbye, say goodbye. There we are. We're also gonna make up our lamb skewers, okay? These have been soaking in water, warm water for about 25 minutes. That's been enough just to uh, prevent these from burning when they actually hit the grill. So let's take care of that right now. Find yourself a clean surface like this, and then just start threading this meat up, right? So, you ever eaten camel? Uh -huh. No. No? What's a camel yep. taste like, John? <coughs> yep. Camel tastes a lot like chicken. Keep it to yourself. <laughs> I'm just gonna make two of these up because it's just me and uh, the lovely Mechanin coming over to join me for dinner a little later on and teach me some, uh, give me some belly dancing lessons. Get a little dance. No, men can belly dance too, okay? This is the 90s. Okay, a little salt on these puppies, a little extra virgin olive oil, very Moroccan. Gotta get a cloth out here, please. And now we're gonna throw these puppies straight onto the grill, okay? Look at that. We're gonna cook these to medium rare, okay? Which is gonna be plenty of cooking for these. Oh, thank you, darling. No, no, that's that. Okay. Hey, 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 hey. Speaking about white slavery, huh? Get out of my kitchen with that camera. Let's close this down. Let's get on to our couscous. Oh, well, that's not what I do best. What the hell is couscous? That's what you're probably saying right now, right? I still don't really know what it means. This is the world's smallest pasta made by the world's smallest pasta makers, okay? They stand about this tall. They have lisps and a club foot, okay? Don't make fun of them because we won't get any more of this for a long, long time. Grab yourself a bowl. This is two cups of couscous, or between a cup and a half and two cups. I'm gonna pour that into the bowl. We got some chicken stock cooking up here, okay? Got it up to a nice heat, and we're just gonna pour this in. But I like just to pour it to a point where it's sort of almost covered. Yeah, that's plenty. At this point, all we need to do is grab a little cling film. Ah, this looks like cling film. Yeah, any one of those kind of crazy wraps that you put on the top of bowls. Speaking about crazy wraps, Cracker, how about giving us a crazy wrap? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was unbelievable, wasn't it? Okay, now we put this wrap on top. <laughs> okay. Always one guy takes a joke too far, isn't there? Well, if you... We're gonna let this sit for a couple minutes. In that time, the heat remaining and the liquid remaining within that chicken stock and the couscous is gonna rehydrate this up beautifully. Let's check our things out here. Oh man, these look great. They're almost there. Almost a perfect Meridi Marrera. Another couple minutes, the fish is happening. We got our couscous here. I'm gonna take five. I'm gonna go have a little belly dancing lesson. When we come back, it's Moroccan heaven. Okay guys, and welcome back to the Camel Shack. Here we are, we're making up our couscous. This has been sitting around for about three, four minutes, okay? And look at this, totally rehydrated. So you just bust it up gently with a wooden spoon, okay? Don't use metal in here, because metal's gonna, just gonna make it a little bit mushy, okay? To this, what we're gonna do, we're gonna add some toasted almonds, a little bit of orange zest. That's, once again, that's the grated bit of the, uh, the skin of the orange. A little bit of lemon juice, a little salt, and our aphrodisiac ras al hanou. Okay, mix this together. Hit it with just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Just give it that sort of textbook Moroccan flavor. 
And this is this is a this is a little game we used to play when we were in Moroccan and call spill the water on the idiot in front of the camera and see how he reacts. And if he reacts by hitting you, you are wrong. <laughs> wow. Hit me again there, mighty arms. <laughs> Sorry, Robert. Okay, that's ready to go. Let's check out our Okay, here we go. Got a couple plates here. Let's get a little couscous down here. Beautiful. Got our medium rare lamb. Look at that. Look at it go. We got our fish happening. Watch this. This is so amazing. The smell you're going to get out of this. You getting this at home? Oh, beautiful. A little more Ras Al Hanou. And I think this is just about ready to uh, be taste tested on the lovely Miss Melissa. I am ready to taste Morocco. And it's Morocco's ready. ready to taste you. What do you say we make some sauce for our lamb? Okay, what's in the sauce? This is just simple, plain yogurt. We got some mint, we got some lemon juice, and we got some sugar. About a quarter cup of each, except for that. That's two cups. Two cups. Yep. Quarter cup of mint. Yep. Fresh mint. Ooh. And that's a little bit of sugar, just white regular granulated sugar. And we're going to toss in, here, you can dump this in here. Now, why mint? Is that because it's really strong? It's a, uh, it's a complimentary flavored lamb. It also has a cooling effect on spicy foods from these countries. So that's why we have it. Mm. Mm, here, look, we're going to take a piece of lamb off here. Oh, man, this looks so good. Well, this is ready for your taste. Look at that, medium rare, too. I love these flavors. And how is it? It takes me to the center of Marrakesh. My dear, how do you feel about tin foil? What? We're red hot and ready. The home of smoky good eats.